Ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, water parameters. What is all this? How does it work? You're tired of bringing fish home after purchasing them at the fish store and you come home and they die in a couple of days. All you want to do is watch them swim around and feed them and enjoy the hobby. It's getting frustrating to the point you don't want to do it anymore. Well, do you hear that? You mind keeping it down back there? Try to make a video. God, fish are some of the noisiest things. <sighs> Anyways, I'll explain all this in the video. You don't have to worry about none of this stuff. You don't have to quit the hobby. I think we just need a little education. We'll get right into it. have this conversation again. So, when you start a fish tank, you want to know the basics. This is something that a lot of fish keepers that don't understand how it works, this is where they make a mistake. Just like when you go to the fair and you win a goldfish and you put it in the tank, you, you rush to Walmart, you get a tank, you bring it home, you set it up and put them in there and <clears throat> <clears throat> Fluffy's dead in a day or two. <clears throat> so when you get a fish tank, you have to let the nitrogen cycle run its course. The nitrogen cycle, the ammonia, the nitrites, the nitrates, this is all good bacteria. You need to create a good colony of bacteria or biological filter in your tank before you can add fish, before you can support a life in your tank, you have to create the environment for him to be healthy, happy, for as long as the fish can live. So, I'm gonna make it short. It doesn't have to go into the scientific end of things. I don't know all the scientific end of things. This is what I know. When you fill a tank with water, you put your filter on, you put your heater on, and you get it running, the nitrogen cycle is, is going to start. This can take anywhere up to two weeks to uh, a month. Depends on your tank, every tank is different. So basically, ammonia is created when a fish breathes and poops in the water, or maybe there's uneaten food in the water, and that creates ammonia. Um, ammonia is what feeds the biological filter. It is also what gets this thing started. There's many ways to do this. We do not need to do fish in cycles anymore. That is the old way of thinking. We have better, safer ways. So ammonia is gonna come up, it's gonna drop. Nitrites are gonna come up and they're gonna drop. Then nitrates are gonna come up and they're gonna be in the tank. You're always gonna have some nitrates in your tank. But ammonia is highly toxic, highly toxic to fish, nitrate, Nit nitrites are highly toxic to fish. Nitrates are relatively harmless to fish. <clears throat> we, that's where we want to get. We want to get to the tank. As soon as you cycle a tank and you see nitrates, your tank is cycled. Now there's several quick ways to get there. The number one fastest way to cycle a tank is to take media out of an already established tank that you have, meaning take your bio rings or some sponge filters, I personally have extra hang on the back filters that I use for this purpose where I'll take the whole thing, stick it in my new tank, and that tank will cycle in a couple days. I have actually put one in a tank and had nitrates that night. It was awesome. But anyways. <clears throat> so yes, you have to complete the nitrogen cycle. So media in the tank from established tank is the fastest way. You can also go to the store and get products that is, what it is is good bacteria in a bottle. Sea Chem Stability uh, is the one that I use. And if you dose the tank by the instructions on the bottle for the next seven days, it establishes that good bacteria and creates your colony and your tank is cycled. I have had that work, it's successful. <clears throat> So once we get that out of the way, there's some things you need to know. Just because your tank is cycled, guess what? You cannot just go ahead and add a bunch of fish in the tank. 
because you're going to wind up with, guess what, a mini cycle. Because you're putting too much load on a brand new tank too fast. You can add, say, five to six small fish, one to two big fish. Wait a couple weeks, add some more. You have to give that bacterial, picture of the bacterial colony as an expandable, an expandable house. You have to give that house time to expand to the new load. Once you have that, then you can add more fish, but you have to give it time. If you overload it, it's going to crash. Kind of like a chair in your house, and somebody's kind of sit too many people on it. We're getting off track. At any rate, so we've established our aquarium. We understand the nitrogen cycle to a degree, other than the scientific end of things of it. And then you've added your fish slowly. Now you've got your fish. One thing we can't help is when you do go to the store and you buy a fish, they're stressed out. You have to understand that these fish came from a fish farm. They were put in a bag. They were tied up in it. They were shipped to the ship, ship all over the world, wherever it's coming from. And then you get it to the fish store where they unbag it, put them in their tanks, another environment they don't know, and people and kids coming in, looking at the tank and tapping at the tank, and then they get scooped out of that tank, put in another bag and sent to another house with new water parameters. So you can imagine how stressful it can be for fish. I've had a lot of fish die from stress. I've taken it back. Heck, one time I took it back, well, uh, got another one, they replaced it, cause all fish stores will honor that. If you get a fish and dies within seven days, they'll, you bring it back with a sample of your water and they'll replace it. Um, I've had to do that three times in a row and this damn fish kept dying. I don't know what the problem was, but they finally stopped. They gave me another fish, but they did give me my money back for it. Nothing wrong with my, my tank or water cream. There's nothing. Uh, they just, I think, got tired of dealing with me. Well, my fault. Fish kept dying. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, so we got the tank established, we got the fish in it, we've added slowly, now we're enjoying it. But that, that is how the nitrogen cycle basically works. You have to be patient, you can't rush into this, which is hard for me because I'm a very impatient person. Yeah, I'm a very impatient person, but I've never lost a fish. Yes, I have. I can't say that. I have lost a fish to impatience. We've all done it. We're all guilty of it. But that's why we live and learn. That's why we have YouTube videos and people to help guide us on any and everything. So. But that's what we do. The next thing I want to talk about and go on to when starting up a new aquarium is the maintenance and what we got to do to maintain a healthy aquarium and those nitrates. I'm going to have to pick a different tank to do these videos in front of these guys back here. They're, they're a real problem. You don't hear that? God. So I won't give you any freshwater flakes if I have to ask you again. I'm talking about you, Silver Fox. You, you're the real problem. God. So, anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, starting a new tank. So we've covered the uh, basics of the first part. The next part is maintaining the tank to keep it happy and healthy. And so it's fun and not a chore for you. What you want to do is you want to do weekly or bi-weekly water changes after you've started this tank and it's running. The water changes are great for tanks. It puts fresh water in the tanks and makes everybody more active. They're not, I, I noticed that like I do bi-weekly water changes. And I noticed at the end of that two weeks, my fish start getting a little lethargic. They start laying around and, um, um, 
you know, they're just not as happy. So I don't like to go any further than doing two every a water change every two weeks. Um, one thing that you also need to make sure you do when you're keeping a tank is on top of the water changes, whether you do it weekly or bi-weekly, every tank is different. You may have to, you know, that's something you're going to have to play with and figure out. Um, every time you feed your fish, don't feed them too much. There's always going to be amount of food that doesn't get eaten if you feed too heavy. And there's always going to be poop laying around in there. You have to get that out. There's um, various different products you can buy to, to, to make that easier, like the electric gravel vacs, like Eheim makes a Provac. I have one. It's pretty good for getting in there and just getting, you know, touching up your tech. Excuse me. I'm getting all that uneaten food and to try this out. The sooner you take that out, the better. The longer it sits in there, it's going to foul the water, which, like we talked about earlier, is going to raise ammonia. And if that sits in there too long and raises the ammonia, you're going to have a mini cycle. You're going to start this back over, and those, you know, like we were saying, ammonia and nitrites is very toxic to fish, and you can kill them. So as long as you do your due diligence and um, clean your tanks and maintain them, you're not going to have the problem. <clears throat> So, we've covered that. Don't start. Don't start. Like this tank behind me, you see here and here, I float water sprite. Makes the tanks look great, the fish love it, they all like digging in it, playing with it. But the problem with water spray is when you feed fish, flake food, pellets, I don't care what kind of food you feed them, a lot of times it gets caught in that stuff. So I have to kind of move that stuff around and get it moving because once it starts moving again, the fish will go after it and need it and clean it up. But if it sits up on in there too long, like at the bottom of your substrate, they start getting these little white fuzzies all around them. And uh, that has to be taken out. You can't let that sit. Um, so, you know, just a little tip, you know, a little side tip. If you have stuff like that in your tank, decor, you know, we got decor down here. Food can get trapped in that stuff. You have to remember, you know, you might want to pick that up and shake it off a little bit and get all that stuff out of there. I mean, the fish can't get to everything. This guy back here is cleaning off my filter. Right now, that's good. The bigger plecos get, the lazier they get. They're really active when they're little. Don't buy a pleco thinking he's going to clean your tank for you. It don't work that way. You still got to put the elbow grease into it. So, awesome. So far, so good. Let me know in the comments below if this video is helping you out. Um, let me know if you know the information has got you to the point where you understand the tanks, how they work a little bit now, because we don't need to go into the complex scientific end of things of it, we just want to keep the fish, right? So that's all we got to do. We got to make sure we put a little bit of work in, understand how things work, and that's with anything in life. You know, you're not going to jump into something unless you research a little bit. Some people do, and they run into issues, especially in this hobby. You can't just pick any fish, throw it in a tank. You have to research that fish, understand what environments it likes, um, temperature of the water it likes, um, eh, and like people, every fish has its own personality, and they're going to be acting different, and they're going to have different behavior traits, and, um, you know, obviously you're not going to take, say, like this guy right here, this, this, this sunburst platy swimming around, I'm not going to put him in the Oscar tank, because after you, when you get Oscars, they're this big. Then they get this big and all of a sudden all your other fish are gone because they've eaten them up. Gone. All because we didn't do our research. We didn't do our due diligence. But let me know if this, like I said, let me know in the comments, please, if this video helped you in understanding how this works and how you can reduce frustration um, in, in enjoying this hobby. Max, Max, you good?
You good? I have to make my videos in the morning before anybody wakes up. Because as soon as everybody wakes up, the covers come off the bird cages, the dogs get excited, and that's nothing but chirp chirps and barks barks and noise. So this my videos are gonna have to be uh, made in the morning. So but with these guys behind me here. I don't know if it's any different than everybody waking up and the birds waking up. Noisy. Especially that guy. Picked his catfish. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, so in the end, it's really not that hard of a thing to understand. Um and it can be a very enjoyable hobby. You don't have to be frustrated. And you can know you can, when the next fish you buy, you're gonna bring it home, you're gonna put it in the tank. And as far as your concern and, and, your, and, and the control that you have, you're gonna be able to keep that fish for a long time and be happy and get more confident in the hobby and maybe even get start getting multiple tanks and having fun. But then, yeah, you're gonna have to deal with this. I, I have yet to feed them breakfast. I'm getting ready. Uh, fish food is a whole other topic. Good quality fish food. If you get cheap fish food, that can foul the water. Have no new, real good nutritional value. I only feed my fish high quality stuff. But at any rate, I gotta get to feeding them these fish. They're getting a little, the, the, the natives are getting restless. But, uh, and then, yeah, well, like I said, all right. Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe to the video, please. I'm trying to grow the channel. And so we'll see you in the next one. Bye.